I can see Pat walking around here. There's many oak trees here. Some of them have been here for hundreds of years. And they're strong and they survive almost anything. And I think of Pat, you know, and her strength. I think of her love for the environment, her uh, wanting to have the whole universe healthy. And I think it's a, a great symbol for Pat, because I think of her big heart and her holding everybody, holding the universe, holding all people, holding animals. And this house has held everybody. My friend Pat Reef was a nun, as I was. She went to St. Louis University, and she also did some work at Oxford. And that's because she was also going to be teaching at Immaculate Heart College. Here at home, a group of nuns decided recently that they would break with the Vatican altogether, but would continue much of the work they had been doing. ABC's Dick Shoemaker has a report from Los Angeles. The 500 sisters own and operate a Catholic girls' college near Hollywood and Vine. In 1967, the sisters started a minor rebellion. They decided it was time to discard the traditional black habit. It was time, they said, to set their own lifestyles, to pray and work where and when they wanted. There were 600 sisters at the peak of the order, no longer connected as a canonical institute to Rome. I think for the Immaculate Heart community, uh, we, um, we had taken a bold step, and that seems like a really feminist thing to do. We weren't bowing to male hierarchical dominance. We were standing up against it. Then what happened is, as Pat became more and more a feminist, she educated the community. Pat created the feminist spirituality program at a time when this scholarship was just budding. It was just beginning. She had wide contact with theologians and philosophers, so she was able to staff the program with eminent scholars throughout those years. It was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. She set it up on the weekends. Um, she brought in feminist theologians who could address those particular topics. So it didn't matter whether it was economics or immigration or mental illness or addictions or violence against women. She, you know, she, was, she wasn't afraid of any of that stuff. Her early understanding of the importance of religion as part of feminist studies in general, uh, what's now sometimes called gender studies, but she really understood that religion couldn't be left out of that, and that to leave it out was to leave out a real factor, kind of an engine, if you will, for discrimination and for oppression that could in fact be turned around, as the great theologian Dan McGuire says, with its renewable moral energy. I was arrested with her. We were part of the group called U.S. Out of El Salvador, and we did a um, resistance, uh, civil disobedience downtown in front of the federal building, yes, right here in Los Angeles. So there were, must have been about 60 or 70, maybe 80 of us, and um, when you go to jail like that, you're all put in the same room and so you really get to know people, waiting to see what's gonna happen. Pat says, as we're walking outside after that little jury trial, she said, so, how do you feel about being guilty? And so people are saying, well, you know, I don't feel guilty, and blah, 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 and she uh, engaged us in a little conversation about that, and she said, well, you know, there's alternative language for that, don't you? And I was like, what do you mean? And she said, some people would call it being faithful. I do. When she suddenly got ill, she was also in Claremont and was even closer, and there was more chance to speak with her. And it went really fast. And so when she died, all of us had this powerful feeling that her presence needed to continue. The IHM women that I that I coordinate this lecture series with have been wonderful to know, 
and um, just knowing more about Pat Reef. The more I know about her, the more I am just enamored of who she was a, a, of a, as a person, as an activist, um, because she took chances and she took risks. How do we honor Pat Reef's legacy? So the way for us to do that, again, is to think hard on what was important to her, to bring forward issues in social activism, social justice, uh, to think about issues uh, around women's spirituality, about um, sometimes resistance to women's movements, um, women's activism, women's spirituality even, and to see how these issues are still active and live. So this is very much what we try to do as a program, and the lecture itself is a, is a way to kind of to, to bring that moment into focus. Back in January, there was a huge mud and debris slide. Huge boulders and mud came down the mountain and it destroyed nine of our buildings. And it surrounded this house with mud, but it didn't come into the house. It had a spiritual strength. Somebody said to the mud and the boulders, you can go somewhere else, but don't come here. And they didn't. And um, I feel like that's kind of the kind of strength Pat had. You know, somebody could do something somewhere else, but not where she was. 